Shabbat Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Kadash. I like to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad, teaching his word and sincerity and truth. All right, I'm the brother Taza Walk. Uh, back at you again to do another show. And um, this one's going to be in the book of Jeremiah, the 16th chapter. And I'm going to jump right into it. This is Jeremiah 16 and 4. They shall die of grievous deaths. They shall not be lamented. Neither shall they be buried. But they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth. And they shall be, a, be consumed by the sword and by famine. And their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. And what is the Lord talking about through Jeremiah? He's talking about the destruction, all right, of Jacob. Okay, two-thirds of our people, you're going to die a grievous death. All right, you scoffers, you know, you guys that was once among us, but never, but never really was for us. You know, you never really uh, believed in the Lord. You never truly had faith. You know, scoffers, as I said before, you know, uh, the wicked, uh, you know, women that jump from man to man, that serve authority over their husbands, over their boyfriends, baby, baby fathers, you know, straight beasts, man, brute beasts. All right, you niggas that's uh, committing adultery on your brother's uh, or your homie, girlfriend, you know, those that won't even, uh, even consider the Lord, man. All right. They won't even consider the Lord because they're too caught up in this world. The Lord said you're going to die of grievous deaths, you know. And you're not going to be lamented neither. Nobody's going to mourn over you, man. It says, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth, meaning you're going to be as pieces of shit, man. You're going to be con you're going to be equivalent, you know, to equally to uh to a uh, dog shit. When you see dog shit on the street corner, and you walking on the pavement, what you do, you step over it. And that's what uh, the Lord is gonna make mockery of you, man. Since you made mockery of the Most High, you made mockery of Yahweh Shai, you made mockery of his prophets, okay? He's gonna have men walk over your dead body, man. So you're gonna die of grievous deaths. And what are the ways of grievous deaths? Grievous deaths is what? Ultimately is the thermonuclear destruction, all right? When the Lord rains coals of fire upon your head, all right? You have concentration camps in which these Edomites, they're going to get busy, man. You know, with Jake, they're going to be putting a chip in you, the mark of the beast. You know, you're going to be tortured. You know, you're going to die of a famine, which is a lack of food and water. You know, hey, Pezzalensis, uh, Elder Apostle Rumlob just did a live stream earlier on Pezzalensis. All right. And how the Lord is basically coming to pass. He's making that prophecy come to pass, man. Right. So you're gonna die of grievous deaths. All right. So now jump into verse five. It says, "For thus saith the Lord Yahweh: Enter not into the house of mourning, neither go to lament nor bemourn them. For I have taken away my peace from this people, saith the Lord Yahweh, even loving kindness and mercy." So the Lord told Jeremiah not to even mourn. You know. Hey, he also told Jeremiah in another verse not to pray for these people, you know? So we ain't out here to pray for two thirds, you know, or for, be for black people. Because first off, we're not black. We're different shades of brown, all right? And this thing that, you know, you Spanish don't like the blacks and the blacks don't like the Spanish, y'all brothers, man. We're one family, we're Yasha Allah. We're Israel, man, okay? We're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of, man. So it says, for thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Enter not into the house of mourning. So I'm not going into no funeral. I'm not going into in person. That's just me personally, man. You know, unless it's someone that's, you know, that dear to me. But, you know, in these these crying times and these evil times that's that's that that we're approaching, we're not gonna uh go into the house of mourning and start mourning, you know, because this is clearly the Lord's judgment coming upon you. Neither neither go to lament nor bemourn them, for I have taken away my peace from this people. So why would I mourn and cry when I know the Heavenly Father have taken his peace away from you, man? When you're basically getting your just due. You're receiving your your wicked reward. 
you know, the reward that you earn, all right? When you cursed out the prophets, when you misused the prophets, all right? When you demonized the prophets of the Lord, when you spoke great swelling words against Yahweh Shai, okay? When you uh, cursed out the Most High, well, guess what? You have earned your reward. Why would I mourn? Okay, right now, we got to be in the spirit of having that, um, of, of having that cold spirit, man, if you know what I mean, you know? You know, this place, America, which is known as Babylon, spiritually Sodom and Egypt, is too feminized, man. And men are not men anymore. They're not raised, being raised up to be men. Even though Israelites, they're not being raised up to be who they truly are, and that's Hebrew Israelites. But besides that, they're not even being raised to be men. The music has feminized you. The foods has feminized you. The chemicals, you know, um, you know, every you name it, man. The, the programming, you know, through your cartoons and through your whole upbringing, it's feminizing. Now these kids in high school and elementary school, they're bunched in with with homosexuals, man. I was shocked to see that, man. I wouldn't say shocked, but but I was just amazed because when I grew up in high school and I was going through school. I can count on my finger. I can count on one hand. I can count on one hand how many gay men that was in the school which was openly gay. All right? It was like three, four. All right? Now, shit, it's more than two hands, man. You know? Now now, now they done, now the, the homos done came out the closet, man. You know? But guess what? You know, you being a homosexual, you're going to get put to death. you one of the ones that's going to die of a grievous death, man. And I'm just speaking what the Bible says, man. All right, because this is what the Lord is going to do unto you, man. All right, let's say if the Bible, let's say if Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. If you don't like it, then that's your problem. That's your problem with the Most High. That's your problem with Yahweh Shai. All right, that's your problem with His order, man. You know, and when you really get into it, you know, you really want to get into that. You know, it's it's unhealthy, man. All right, it's unhealthy. It's unclean. All right, it's unseemly. All right, so um, for thus saith the Lord, enter not into the house of mourning, neither go to lament nor bemourn them. For I have taken my peace from this people, saith the Lord Yahweh, even the loving kindness and mercies. And you see how right now we're in a time of mercy, man. We're in a time where you should be praying to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai to receive mercy, man. You should be calling upon his name. You should be rehearsing the righteous acts. This is the time of mercy. Because this is the time where the doors of repentance is open, you know, to the Israelites. Okay, even confusion of faces. Those that may not look like Israelites, if they wake up to the fact that they believe that they're Israelites through the, you know, through the spirit or through the line of their father, the lineage, then guess what? This is the time of repentance, man. And soon the doors of repentance going to close, man. Okay, it's going to be a crying for wine in the streets, man. Okay, it ain't going to be no jobs in Egypt, man. Okay, it ain't gonna be no um, no no oil for you to retain, man. Okay, because the word itself is gonna be closed up, and remember, the Lord closed the word before. Okay, He shut the book, and that, all right, and now the book is open into the firmament, and that's the men of the Lord with the Bibles, reading the, the strolls, the scriptures, the manuscripts, the, the the records, all right, the prophecies, out on the highways and byways. All right, week in and week out, in season and out of season, man. Okay, now verse six, it says, "Both the great and small shall die in this land; they shall not be uh, buried, neither shall men lament for them, nor cut themselves, nor make themselves bald for for them, because in a Hebrew custom, what it was that when you lost a loved one, you were you were mourn, you know, you would cut your uh, hair hair off, go bald." You'll pluck your beard out. A man used to used to pluck his beard out, man. I know that shit has to hurt, but you know when you're mourning in that agony and pain because of the loved one loss, I mean you probably don't feel it, man. But just you know ripping out your beard, man. You know men wore sackcloth. They threw dirt upon their faces and they walked around like that because they was in great mourning, great pain and distress, man. Well, that's what the Lord is gonna put you two thirds in, man. He's going to set the folly of this place, you know, to be in destruction, man. You know, to make, uh, you know, because basically as the, uh, the Apocrypha, it tells you what? You was uh, born in vain, man. You know, 
Right now, folly is set in great dignity, man. So the Lord is going to make you mourn, man. All right? And especially the scoffers. And especially those that turned away of the truth, man. That was once a part of us, man. But really never was of us, man. So it says, um, uh, verse 7, Neither shall men tear themselves to them in the morning to comfort them for the dead. Neither shall men give them the cup of constellation to drink for their father or for their mother. Because you know why? You're not even going to have time to mourn someone when you got to move, man. If you not, if you don't want to die, you're going to have to live like a pilgrim, man. And you're going to have to pilgrim all, all, all through the earth until what? Hopefully, <laughs> you know, hoping, you know, and that's the thing. You're going to have... Uh, 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 you're going to have these outlaws You're going to have these renegades You know, they're going to be Warring through the streets Killing and killing and winning They think they're winning But they're going to be constantly pilgriming To what? See destruction, man They're going to see that it's never an end, man Because that really, at their end It's going to be a great fall for them See, the ones that pilgrim And in, in for the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Hey, we're going to see salvation And I hope to be a part of that, man but those men gonna see salvation, man, because the ways of the Lord chariots and angels, man. All right. See, we we know what we worship. We know what our hope is for. We, we know what we pray to. We we know who we pray to. All right. We know what this thing is all about, man. You know. So you got doomsday preppers. You know. Really, what's your solution? Hoping that the government establishes itself again, that your America regains its uh, you know, its democracy. And standards, you know, well, what standards? You know? Nah, this place is finished. America's done for, man. Straight up, man. Um, it says, um, Thou shalt not also go into the house of feasting, feasting to sit with them to eat and to drink. Okay? So he told Jeremiah not to go into these places, man. And it's the same that's going to apply to us today. We're not going to go into where they, where, uh, you know, where they're eating and feasting, man. You know, you know, hey, these devils can have a stadium and they could be uh, promoting that, uh, you know, we got foods and water, you know, and you can hear music coming from the area. We're not going to those places, man. All right. Neither now. You know, hey, most of the brothers, hey, did I, did I speak to? Hey, brothers ain't going to those places, man, to feasting and partying and shit, man. You know, having fun. You know, brothers may, you know, we're balanced. Brothers may do a little bit to enjoy themselves, but brothers ain't going into these places for, uh, for, you know, to have fun. You know, it's just to enjoy yourself for a moment. Hey, to ease off whatever it is that we're going through. We're catching hella hell here, man. You know, so that's already rehearsing and practicing in us now. The Lord is preparing us now. All right. It says, um, Neither shall men it, uh, verse 9, For thus saith the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, the power of Israel, behold, I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes, and in your days the voice of mirth, and the voice of gladness, and the voice of bridegroom, and the voice of the bride. And it shall come to pass, when thou shalt show this people all these words, and they shall say unto thee, Wherefore have the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us, or what is our iniquity, or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord our power? And these are the things you're going to say, man. You're going to say these things because you're going to be wondering why these great hells and tribulations is coming upon you. All right? When you're seeing limbs being ripped apart in front of your face. When your children is pe take it, uh, being taken away from you before your eyes. When your woman is being ravished before your eyes, being raped. And you can't do a damn thing about it, you know. I, I want. I'm trying. I'm striving to think of, um, you know, the worst possible thing, because these are the things that's going to be happening to you, man. You know, it says, "For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel: Behold, I will cause to cease out of this place in your eyes, and in your days, the voice of mirth." It says, and the voice of gladness. So it ain't going to be no gladness. All right, children shouting for joy and playing around. It says, and, and women, uh, uh, you know, sashaying, being whores and, and feeling like 
you know, they got everything a heart could wish for, you know, uh, you know, it says, uh, the voice of bridegrooms and the voice of the bride. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt show these people all these words. And that's what we're doing now. We're in the time where we're showing you people all these words of the Lord. All right. We're showing you the, uh, the, the Jacob's trouble. Okay. That's, that's, that's going to approach you, man. Okay. So it says, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt show this people all these words, and they shall say unto thee, Wherefore have the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? And that's what you might be saying now. You're watching this video, and you might be saying, well, where in the Bible it says the Lord going to do all that to us? You know, the Christians say it, you know. Oh, you guys, you always talking about destruction. You know, God loves. What about the love, brother? What about the love? You know, you probably saying this right now if you have no clue of what this video is about. All right. It says, um, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt show this people all these words and they shall say unto thee, wherefore have the Lord pronounced all this great evil against us? Or what is our iniquity? Now you're saying, what is our iniquity? You know, Jake is so blind and so, so, so uh, deep and sinister, so deep sleep, excuse me. Jake is so blind and ate so much of in a deep sleep that you don't even know your iniqu only iniqu your own iniquity. You don't even know the sins that you're committing against the Most High, against Yahweh Shai, man. All right? It says, or what is our sin that we have committed against the Lord, our power? All right? All right, now this is Jeremiah 16 and 11. Then say, uh, Shalakia, then shalt thou say unto them, Because your father hath forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me, and have not kept my law. So just like it happened in the past, you had Israel forsaking the Most High. It's the same thing that's happening now. All right? You know, you people resist the power, the true and living power, man. You know, our people would rather have it so, man. You know, they would rather be lied to. You know, they don't want to worship the Most High, man, because, you know, now you have to be disciplined. Now you have to think twice, you know, of upon, you know, the, the things that you do, you know. And, um, you know, sin tastes good, man. You know, sin is like a, a fat cheeseburger with, uh, you know, with onions, cooked onions and all that good shit, man. You know, it, it tastes so good, man. You know, it's, it's you know you can't resist it because it feels good. Not only that, it tastes good, it feels good, man, to these people. You know, but here it is. You know, to be disciplined in Yahweh Shai is more of an alkaline diet. You know, it's more of a, a, a diet where you got to refrain from your appetite. You know, you can't indulge into anything, man. You know, you gotta get some. You gotta get some sleep. You can't stay up late. You know, I'm just comparing, you know, a healthy body to a, you know, to the word, man. You know, because really when you're sinning, you ain't got a healthy body, man. You know, you got a healthy body when you're in the good graces with the most high, man. Because he the one that prolonged our lives, man. Or he shortened our lives, man. You know, so being with the Lord is discipline. You know, uh, uh, having to live with sacrificing. You know, refraining from your appetite, man. You know, uh, uh, sin. You know, to our people, two thirds, you know, it feels so good, man. They could do whatever they want. It's lawlessness, man. Okay, so let me get that back again. It says, Then shall they say unto me, Because your fathers have forsaken me, saith the Lord, and have walked after other gods. And this is what this is what the main issue is that the Lord has a problem with you, man. Because our people, you so called Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, Hispanics, and Native and Seminole Indians, you walk after other gods, man. You praying to other gods and you not realizing that it's a it's very serious and who you uh who you worship, man. You know? You calling upon Jesus, uh you calling upon um uh Jesus Christ, you know, you and Jehovah's wickedness, you worshiping Buddha, you know, hey, you got your own uh, uh philosophy and how you live, meditation, whatever you call yourself, you know. You, the most you have, if you're an Israelite, the most I have a problem with you, man. All right. It says, um, but it says, and have and have served them, and have worshipped them, 
and have forsaken me and have not kept my law. So you guilty because you have not kept the law, man. And you even more guilty because even your Abishai said, there's no cloak for their sins, man. Meaning there's no excuse because even in this day, 2019, the Lord have raised up men. And they're before you teaching and, and, and pushing the truth. You know, they're, they're give, bringing you back into remembrance of things you once knew. And that's being a Hebrew Israelite, having your tradition and culture and the laws of the Lord that you're supposed to honor, all right? So really there's no cloak for their sin. There's no excuse for you today. You can't say, oh, I didn't know. Why nobody tell me? It wasn't my fault, you know, or the most high, it was your fault. You raised me like this. You know, a lot of niggas in the hood, they like to blame the Lord. I'm a product of my environment. I mean, that's true true to a certain extent. But here it is. Hey, if you've grown, you're supposed to think as a man. You know, Paul said when I was a child, he thought as a child. When he came an adult, he thought as an adult, man. You know right for wrong when you get to a certain age. And you know the bullshit that you're still doing, man. You know as it comes with a consequence. You know, you know, you know when you see police, all right? They come lock your ass up for you doing some dumb shit, you know? Getting yourself involved in that bullshit, man. The streets is whack, man. That shit is played out. Right now, what's in is that you waking up to this fact that you're an Hebrew Israelite, man. All right? From the seed of your father, okay? In order to be an Israelite, Isaiah 46 and 3, the Lord said, you must be born by me from the belly and carried from the womb. So in order to be an Israelite, all right, you have to be born an Israelite from the seed of your father, man. Okay? So, it says, uh, verse 12, And ye have done worse than your fathers, for behold, ye walk every one after the imagination of his evil heart, and they may not hearken unto me. Therefore will I cast you out of this land into a land that it shall no more be said. Scott Slack here, mixing it up. Verse 13. Therefore will I cast you out of this land that ye know not. It's like, I'm gonna read it again. I'm gonna pull over. Let me pull over here. Sometimes I can read and drive, sometimes I can't. You know, it depends on the speed of the traffic. But uh, this is verse 13. Therefore, I will cast you out of this land into a land that ye know not, neither ye nor your fathers. And there shall ye serve other gods day and night, where I will not show you favor. And what is he talking about? He's talking about this land and what you call North America, man. This side of the world we didn't know, we didn't even know about, man. Okay, we didn't we didn't uh, really care for this land. Meaning we, you know, those, you know, we knew about it. Let me say that because King Solomon, he uh, had them, the men of Tarshish sell over here to get exotic animals, but we cared for this land. We never cared for this land. All right, we never thought we would be on this side of the world. Now, to repeat what the Lord's saying, because this is actually prophecy fulfilled. So it says, and ye have, uh, verse 13, therefore will I cast you out of this land into a land that ye know not, neither ye nor your fathers, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night. And here you serve other gods here, man. All right, day and night. It says, where I am, where I will not show you favor. And this is clearly a time. All right, where the Lord, you can see, man, that he have not showed our people's favor, man. You getting gunned down by the police. Our people are strung out on drugs. All right, our people are the first fired, the last to get hired. Okay, our, our women, the women of our, our tribes, the women of our nations are straight up whores, the biggest whores on the planet. Okay, in our reality, you know, the, the women, the women of our nation you so-called blacks, Latinos, Native and Seminole Indians, Haitians, Hispanics, all right, uh, uh, West Indians, the women of our tribes, you know, are now become concubines, become slut buckets. When our women was princesses, treated with royalty, you know, treated with high standard, man. You know, you know, if you had an Israelite woman, you know, you had one of the best. But now the rules have been reversed, man. You know. And this is why we need Yahweh Shah to get back what we lost, man. Okay, to overturn what this devil have have done unto us, man. You know, um, and, and ultimately the Most High, what He's done unto us. Okay, because it was all due to a punishment, man. So it says, "Where I will not show you favor." It says, "Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that 
it shall no more be said it shall no more be said the Lord liveth that brought you up that brought the excuse me that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt so it's going to be no more to be said man because that was a great deliverance that happened back in ancient Egypt man when the Lord used he used Moses gave power to Moses you know to split the Red Sea we was uh, traveling by day pitch tent by night you know with the chariot the angels of the angel of the most high which really was Yahweh Shai leading us out of the uh, uh, in the wilderness okay you know all the people of the world knew you know how to our power our our power man you know delivered us as a people from the hands of Egypt because Egypt was mighty man mighty it's like America today mighty you know proud you know so it says, therefore, behold, the days come, say of the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But, all right, key word there, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. And where we at? Talking about the northern hemisphere, man. Okay, North America. Because why? This deliverance that's going to happen is going to be greater than what happened when we was delivered in Egypt. It says, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whether he hath driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers, man. So when you got these Israelites that's going over there to Israel now, filming themselves, talking to the so-called Jews, the Edomites over there that's claiming to be us. Listen, we got to wait for this deliverance in order for our land to be beautified, man. To be made holy again the most high got to clean up that place you know it doesn't make you special because you over there and you filming today and like look I'm, I'm in zion or whatever the case may be it doesn't even matter the children of israel ain't gonna see that homeland until yahweh shy return man you know it's all about prophecies it's all about the lord prophecies being fulfilled man so i'm gonna read that again it says but the lord liveth that brought up the children of israel from the land of the north and from all the lands, whether they had, they had, they had, whether he had driven them, okay. So that means that the scattered Israelites throughout the four corners of the earth, man, wherever the Lord had driven them, okay, he's going to gather them. He says, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Who? What fathers? Our forefathers, man. Okay, which he promised us, man. Okay, the land, the land of Israel, man, Jerusalem, and really. The whole world. Because you read in Second Edges, he said he made this world for our sakes, man. All right? But now what? These heathens that would have been ever reputed as nothing have begun to be lords over us. All right? So really, we're going to have that land, but we're going to have the world, man. All right? It says, um, verse 16, Behold, I will send for many fishes, saith the Lord, and they shall, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and from out of the holes of the rocks. All right. So that's a promise to the prophets, man. First off, the Lord is fishing us. Okay. Through the prophets he set up. And, we, you know, you're being fished out. The hopeful elect. All right. Throughout the four corners of the earth. And then, then what? These fish is going to be turned into hunters. All right. These fishes, these men he set up to fish. Now these men are going to be turned into hunters, man. And who are they going to hunt? They're going to hunt you heathens, man. Okay? When Yahweh Shah return and he give that order, all right, for us to reap, all right? The scriptures say the, uh, the, uh, um, ah, what's the word? Um, uh, the meat shall inherit the earth. All right? So we're going to reap, man. Okay? Uh, we, we're going to, uh, uh, take the kingdom as it is written, you know, and that means what by force You're gonna take the kingdom by force man. All right. Um, I think this is it verse 17 It says for my eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face Neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes man. All right And first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double because they have defiled the land. They have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. All right. So, you know, that's basically it for this lesson.
you know, Jeremiah 16th chapter, man. You know, the Lord is going to come through for the brothers, man. Come through for the elect, you know. You see the you see all these prophecies taking place, man. You see all the, uh, the men of the Lord waking up, you know. You see how this word been spreading throughout the four corners of the earth, you know. Got brothers all over, man. Uh, you see how Apostle Ramlab, Elder Apostle Ramlab, he uh, did the live stream. He spoke about the pestilences, man. And then he did a part two because he said he received the article from a brother that uh, I guess he received after the after the show. And um, he spoke about pestilences, man. So so disease warfare is happening, man. You know, the Lord is going to kill people, too, by the way of these diseases. And guess where these diseases are created at? In the laboratory through Esau hands, man. Through Esau Edom. Okay? And uh, when he unleashed these things, especially, like the apostle said, man, when they, they unleash it here in America, man, he said this place is uh pro, like proactive because everything is all, it's like this. You know, you got to go in, you go into the grocery store, the supermarket, you touching bag of chips or you don't want those or you get something to drink, you open in the, hey man, you know, this place is, uh, is hey, this place could look, it's, it, it looks pretty, seems normal now. But I could see, you know, the vision of how this place will look so ugly, man. You know, when uh, pestilences hit this place and people mourning, man. And that's why I wanted to read Jeremiah 16 because it goes hand in hand, man. You know, he said, you shall die of grievous deaths. All right? You know? So with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakodash. I like to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word of sincerity and truth. Shalom.